Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition Stop Stories. The Prime Minister welcomes Carrie Creasy's most recently assigned ratings for St. Lucia. Local business Optronics is expanding its reach district by district. And the Rotary Club of St. Lucia elects six female president. The Caribbean's credit rating agency, Caribbean Information and Credit Rating Services Limited, CARICRIS, has reaffirmed the assigned ratings of BBB on its regional rating scale to several debt programs of the government of St. Lucia. These ratings indicate that the level of credit worthiness of these debt obligations, a judge in relation to other debt obligations in the Caribbean, is adequate. The agency has also maintained a stable outlook on the ratings. In a statement, Caricris indicated that its stable outlook is premised on the expectation of strong construction activity and a partial recovery in tourism in 2021, and that debt to GDP would not breach the current rating category's limit. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Shastney welcomed the ratings. Considering everything that we have been through with COVID, uh, we are very satisfied with where we are at this point. Um, it's a stable outlook and there was no further downgrade of our credit rating. And more importantly, um, I think that Carrie Chris shares our optimism as to what the future holds. And I remind us that we had a 10% increase in the level of debt, which was about $300 million, but we had a decline of 20% or contraction in our economy. Um, almost 90% of that decline was attributed to tourism. So as we're now seeing tourism rebound, and we're really hoping that the UK market opens up very soon, as well as the Canadian market, and we see some return um, to our Caribbean market before the end of the year, it is anticipated that we will see a faster recovery of our GDP. And in fact, if by the end of the year, the GDP recovers to its pre-COVID level, the debt to GDP would decline well below 70%. Um, the numbers of arrivals that we're seeing from the U.S., in fact, we're breaking records out of the U.S. Uh, we reached 82% of our U.S. arrivals in the month of May, and that is a month in which we had broken a record in 2019. We're expecting the numbers in June and July to actually exceed the number of U.S. arrivals that we had in 2019. It is also projected that we would have recovered 50% of our total tourism business by the end of, of June. On Tuesday, the 29th June 2021, cruise tourism was reintroduced to St. Lucia when the island welcomed Celebrity Millennium, another indicator of the island's impending recovery. The Cary Chris further indicated that debt to GDP would plateau, with borrowings for the Hiranora International Airport's redevelopment, but would thereafter decline as COVID-19's negative fiscal impacts begin to taper off. GDP improvements lead to better fiscal performance and fiscal consolidation towards achievement of the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union's debt to GDP target of 60% by 2035 is pursued. This is not something that has come easily. Uh, so from March of last year, when we saw the closure of our economy to reopening of our international borders by June of 2020, and the progress that we've made since then, these policies have helped. The policy of implementing shovel-ready projects, the road projects, the airport, St. Jude's, the water projects, uh, improvement of all of our infrastructure around the island has also augured well for us because it's been able to re-employ persons who otherwise would have not been employed. And now that the tourism is recovering, we're starting to see a fuller recovery of our unemployment rates. I was also heartened to hear from my retail and wholesale sectors and the banking industry that the fallout of COVID wasn't as bad as we had anticipated and the policies of the government have worked. So again, this is good news for all of us um, and certainly will continue to instill the confidence that we have seen um, in our economy and uh, return to some level of normalcy. And again, for all the St. Lucians who've been impacted, uh, know that your government is here with you. We're doing everything we possibly can. 
Carrie Chris indicated that the ratings on St. Lucia continue to reflect the island's sound financial sector. Despite COVID-19 challenges, broad-based economic activity and moderate GDP strengthening is expected in coming years. The principal of the Gordon and Walcott Memorial Methodist School has hailed the start of work on a new wing for her institution as another complement to the school's rich legacy of excellence. Chris Satney has more in this report. The construction of the new block will see the demolition of the old infant wing of the school to provide more security, adequate operating space, and enhancement of the teaching and learning experience at the institution. It's been a 10-year wait for the Gordon and Walcott Memorial Methodist School, which has undergone several name changes over the years since the first Methodist school was established in St. Lucia over 131 years ago. In 1951, the primary school was moved to the current location and named after the first head teacher, the late Thomas Gordon. Principal of the school, Margaret Gabriel, touched by this recent endeavor, was encouraged to take a trip down memory lane. In 1962, the Methodist Infant School building was constructed on the compound next to the primary school, right behind us across there. It was named the Alex Walcott Methodist School. The works will consist of a two-level reinforced concrete structure. The first floor will contain four classrooms, staff room and washroom facilities, while the ground floor will consist of one classroom, music room, theater arts and French rooms, and a sick bay. It's a plan which satisfies the Gordon and Walcott School's principal. We look forward to the completion of this beautiful new block which will transform our school compound and modernize our facilities to help us offer quality education in a more conducive physical environment. Research has shown that enhanced physical spaces can boost motivation and morale among students as well as staff. Minister with Responsibility for Education, Honorable Dr. Gail Brigabert, who helped turn the sword for the start of the construction, is certain this and two other schools being built under the Education Quality Improvement Project EQUIP at a total cost of 20 million EC dollars will ensure the sustainability of modern education at these institutions for generations to come. So the social fabric of our society is what concerns us. The things that hurt our people is what motivates us to fix things, to address issues, and to ensure that we put systems in place that will outlive us. Because it is not an egotistical endeavor that my minister, ministerial colleague and I, or I will boast that I have done this. It's not about us. It is about the people and ensuring that we give to them what they earnestly desire, deserve, and want for themselves and for their families. The site works will include improvements in the perimeter fencing and vehicular parking conditions. It will also include improved site drainage and improved site access on the northern boundary, as well as refurbishment of the existing septic tank. MP for Castry Central, Honorable Sarah Flood Bobra, says the school is well-placed to build on its rich history to make even greater accomplishments in the future. So I want to thank you for all that you've done. I mean, your school uh, looks so clean, the environment so welcoming, your students so well-behaved. You will excel even more in a, an environment that's suited more to these times to help you perfect your work even more. So I want to say how very pleased and grateful I am today as, a, as your Member of Parliament to thank again the Minister of Education and her entire team for prioritizing this project. The construction of the new block at the Gordon and Walcott Memorial Methodist will be undertaken through a 10-month period by Prudy's Construction Limited at a cost of just over $5 million EC dollars. From the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, I am Chris Satney reporting.
After hosting a successful student digital skills training last year, local business Optronics is expanding its reach district by district. In September, digital training sessions will be held at the Grozile Human Resource Center for individuals 16 years and older. Participants will be engaged in training on social media marketing, website design, basic graphic design, PowerPoint presentations, e-commerce tools, and the effective use of information management systems like Google Suite. Optronics co-founder Keegan Patrick says this type of engagement with the public is geared towards increasing digital literacy and the number of digital businesses in Grozile. So we want to um, help develop this um, interest in technology. We want to see um, St. Lucia and the Caribbean region become a place where we're not only um, users of innovative technologies but we become creators of innovative technologies. Mm -hmm. These STEM educational programs focus on um, teaching the human capital of St. Lucia with wider perspectives of the Caribbean about technology, about engineering and um, the digital space as it's growing. Um, we know uh, in the world right now many um, there's the almost the fourth industrial revolution where we're going into technology the internet of things and we're trying to bring this um, new space of technology to St. Lucia and try to get our public familiarized and interested in this kind of industry. Operations manager overseeing the upcoming training sessions says the response by the public has been tremendous. He encourages persons to register if they want to transition their businesses online or enhance their employability. If you just want to tone on your skills and get like um, introduced to new applications that you wouldn't know existed mm -hmm. to like bring your business from just a normal um, like a traditional business but more put it online put it out there make mm -hmm. ads on social media create a, a different flyer or create a qr code so that's what we we're trying to teach people we knew people would be interested but we didn't expect so many people mm -hmm. and the, the good thing is that um we hit in all different age ranges. So yeah. it's not like persons saying that their the kid is um, in, out of school and they want to send them to do something. Mm -hmm. It's more people asking for time off from work, asking us to send them an email so that they could ask for the day off mm -hmm. to really push themselves. And that really made us realize like, wow, people really want to do better and really get into the digital economy more. The three focus areas of the Optronics company are website and mobile applications development, rapid prototyping services, and the STEM educational program that includes the digital skills training. The government of St. Lucia is providing immediate relief to the various sectors and individuals impacted by the passage of Hurricane Elsa. The Prime Minister of St. Lucia made the announcement this past weekend where he disclosed that the island has recorded millions of dollars in damages to its infrastructure, agriculture and housing. Details in this report. Several government agencies are conducting damage assessments in various sectors impacted by the passage of Hurricane Elsa. Hurricane Elsa battered St. Lucia as a Category 1 hurricane on Friday, 2nd July 2021, leaving in its path damage to the country's infrastructure, agriculture and utilities, the greatest damage being recorded in the agriculture sector. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney on Sunday provided an update on the damage recorded and recovery plan for St. Lucia. The Ministry of Education, there were several schools in which the roofs were damaged. Um, as well as the CDC buildings, um, eight of the buildings, the roofs were badly damaged, but 13 buildings were impacted altogether. In terms of individual households, we're still doing a full assessment. I believe the teams are still on the ground, um, determining how many homes were actually impacted. Um, and we've gotten from different constituencies, obviously you would appreciate different numbers so far, but I'm hoping that by tomorrow, Monday, that would receive a more accurate update on the number of households specifically that have been hindered. Um, we have received word from CRIF, which is the uh, catastrophic insurance program that we have, that the numbers that they have received so far, that we're not going to be expecting uh, a significant payout um, from there, more than likely just the deductible that we have, which is about 130,000 US dollars. So it means that the Ministry of Finance is already looking for ways to reallocate existing funds to be able to assist in um, getting the 
Ministry of Agriculture back on track again, um, and certainly working with the Ministry of Infrastructure in dealing with some immediate needs. Um, and really the, the, the big one would really be the Ministry of Education and through the Ministry of Equity, some of the individual households, particularly to the more vulnerable persons in our society. The Prime Minister, noting that this is only the beginning of the hurricane season, indicated that swift action must be taken to ensure the recovery of the country and preparations for storms to come. He explained that the government of St. Lucia, following the passage of Hurricane Elsa, immediately began recovery efforts. Instructions have been given to the Ministry of Housing um, to move very swiftly to replace the, the roof at CDC Village. So that's going to start on Monday. Two, that we will find resources um, to help support the farmers. So I, I don't want the farmers to believe in any way that there's any question. I think what the minister was making reference to is to exactly what those interventions are going to be. We have the example of Kurt, of some of the things that we have done. Um, we believe they may need they need of some additional interventions and different types of inter We know that the fertilizer is one of them. Mm -hmm. Certainly whether in fact we're going to give some labor support and how that mechanism would work if necessary. Um, <coughs> so from a farmer, uh, from a banana growers and also planting growers, there is going to be an intervention. I think that, um, not think, I know that we will find resources or some mechanism to deal with the greenhouses that have been lost once the full assessment has been established. But I certainly want to let the farmers know in all constituencies that the government will make resources available once the Ministry of Agriculture finalizes the plans. But there will be an immediate intervention. Prime Minister Honorable Shasni also assured that the government will be providing immediate relief to individuals affected by the passage of Hurricane Elsa. So I just really want to emphasize to everyone, just in case there was any misconception, the government is not, not hesitating um, to support um, our farmers in this particularly um, difficult period. And despite our own um, financial constraints, this is too important of a sector. And that also applies to the, to the fisher folk as well. Um, again, I can't say to you tonight how much and how. I have to wait for those details from the ministry. But I give them the assurances as we did in the meeting yesterday that the Ministry of Finance will find those resources from somewhere to be able to make an immediate intervention. And lastly, but not least, individual households, the Ministry of Equity will be working with many of the vulnerable persons in our society who have been, who have lost roofs, um, whose houses have been further compromised to do a very quick assessment and for us to be able to provide some immediate relief to those persons because we recognize we're still in the middle of our hurricane season and we have to move quickly. Members of the public are urged to ensure they are in a state of preparedness as the hurricane season runs from June to November. Individuals are also urged to remain vigilant and stay tuned to trusted sources for reliable information. The Rotary Club of St. Lucia has elected its sixth female president in the 55th year of the club. Hamadi Mark has details in this report. Ketura Donai has been installed as president of the St. Lucia Rotary Club of St. Lucia for the year 2021-2022. Donai holds a master's in finance and is the finance manager at the National Skills Development Center. Ketura Donai was inducted into the Rotary Club of St. Lucia in 2017. Shortly after her induction, she served as the club's treasurer. At a handing over ceremony on June 30, 2021, she received the presidential torch from the immediate past President Lethan Khan. He also presented her with the president's spear and medallion to signal the commencement of her tenure. The RI Global Rotary theme for this year is Serve to Change Lives. We say our four tests often as a reminder of how we do things. We did tonight, we recited the four we test of the things we think, say, or do. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? This year's theme reminds us of why we joined Rotary 
and the oath we took and the ones we just took tonight. I believe we are all on earth to serve at different levels and at different times. I am honored that you chose me to serve with you as your president this year. Donna e presented the board of directors for the year 2021. She thanked her colleagues for the opportunity to serve at the helm of the organization and shared plans for the year ahead. Being president of a Rotary Club is, is a very, very serious job. It requires a lot of commitment, patience, dedication and commitment, and then some. Um, don't, don't take the role of a president for granted. It's an experience that you're going to remember for the rest of your life. The Rotary Club celebrates 55 years of humanitarian service to St. Lucia. From the Government Information Service, I'm Huma Mark reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. One of the eight universally recognized rights of the consumer is the right to satisfaction of basic needs. This means that every consumer has the right to basic goods and services that guarantee survival. This right includes adequate food, clothing, shelter, healthcare, education, water, and sanitation. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Monsieur Tangenel, Monsieur, Madame, Département, qui n'est pas responsable pour l'information en gouvernement celle-ci, c'est GIS, à ce moment de télévision nationale pays à NTN, qui a posé une nouvelle en Aquayol, posé au Primus Hutchinson. Village Canary a continué pour faire contribution pour le développement touristique et le développement pour l'économie par cela, excepté si généralement. Pour cela, c'est une usine chocolat qui est ouverte la semaine passée à comme une belle vie. L'initiative est faite par Madame et M. Calixtus et Maria Jackson, mais principalement Maria, qui prend une décision pour rouler un coup de gouin de côté de laisser travailler pour prendre go with cela. Parce que le gouvernement est ici qui a continué pour ouvrir l'occasion pour développer le business touristique en Saint-Ticot, en PIA. Ça a ouvert le chemin pour le PIA même, pour l'avantage, et embrasser l'occasion. Maria Jackson, qui s'est géré des opérations et met le business, là, déjà une SPS en travail chocolat, quand un chef en hôtel, et c'est pour les gens qui établissent celle-ci. Le représentatif en Kai Parlement pour Aslawi Kanawi, qui aussi c'est ministre des Affaires touristiques, Honorable Dominique Fede, qui a eu l'initiative de la grande occasion pour Jean Kanawi trouver un travail, et aussi il dit que c'est une occasion pour Kanawi vivre établi un business Kako qui était vivant en ta passé. Le ministre Fede promet que le gouvernement a facilité l'environnement pour établir trois business comme ça. Le Premier ministre, c'est le Honorable Alain Chastney, déclare que ce qui est plus important en affaires business, c'est pour développer la publicité et présenter les produits à une façon qui peut intéresser les gens pour acheter. Le Premier ministre Chastney, c'est que ce chocolat, les gens qui ne connaissent pas même connaître cette ici, goûter à un autre pays, qui fait des recherches pour savoir qui côté cette ici qui existe et qui visite à résultat de chocolat là qui ont goûté. Calixas Jackson, Marie Maria, expliquait l'importance de l'usine chocolat là pour Jacques Naoui, principalement en ligne de déploiement. Quand nous savons que le comité Kanawi, c'est un côté où il y a un chai, un monde qui n'a pas de travail, un monde qui a besoin de travail, un chai, maman, qui n'a pas de maoui pour te faire, et qui n'a pas de maoui, et qui n'a pas de maoui. Ici, nous avons provoqué l'employement de ces mamans là pour ça. Pour que la famille, même si elle n'a pas de mari, eh bien, l'autre monde peut être pour le pancaille. Selon Calixtus, à part du travail qu'il a conduit dans les îles, 
yo kai ofe pou moun vizite e ka pran manye travay sa la ka fèt men sa ki kai plis epòtan pou yo se pou plase pou du sa la an degwe etenasyonal nou osi an teorese pou mete pa jas set li pa jas kanawi um, but set li si an uh, an le map la pou pou fè yo pou fè la te a sa ban dat set li si nou ka podwi an uh, bon pro, an podwi podwi a se of primer pou primer quality ou sa ka chile of plan se met li zen chokola ka ko set li si ni gwan Ase ni gwan plan pou vi pou rive a dan degwe etenasyonal pli vit ki posib ek pou employe plis ki 25 rezidan kanari an biznes sa la. Le menis an kabinet gouvetman set li si te vini an sam sam di pasi di 3em an mwa di juyet a de yon sesyon pou kontinye fe asesman a sou domaj ki si klon Elsa PC a sou set li si. Sa se te vandou di ek sam di pase, kote yi pote an pil van ek la pli. Kwe e minis set le se onwab Alen Chasne, te vizite se komin ki te pli afekte. Sa se te sam di pase, ek gouvetman te ja osi komase pou ede an efo pou netwaye domaj ek asiste yo ki pli di wizen. An pa mese ajans la ki pose te wapo aso se domaj la se te nimo, minister de agriculture ek minister de zafè egalite. Ni mo prezante wapo a sou domaj pou fetay kay, kay ki osi domaje ek osi pote pou to kouan ek dlo ek telekomunikasyon. Minister de Agriculture prezante wapo a sou domaj le kiltevate an peyi a espiyanse kote plis ki 75 pou 80 pou san den we touve domaje. Minister de Sante wapo te ki yo pa te touve pies 49 de maladi korona ant le 29 an madjen pou li 4 anwa djouye 2021. Minister de Sante osi wifevwe wapo ki 12 endividi ki te touve jewizon hod COVID ek ha touve jewizon ek 4 an se ka ki a te aktiv apwe sa ka wifevwe tretman an l'hôpital Victoria. Ta se at li premye anwa djouye an total di 30,989 endividi wifevwe premye doz la vaksin ek 22,103 wifevwe dezyem doz la vaksin. Les ofisye sante ye kat menm pli konsane pou se ka nef korona ki pli danjewe ek sa afekte sante moun pli mouve. Chef ofisye medikal ar set le se Dr. Sharon Belma George deklare ki padan yo ni konfyans ki la vaksin nan ni bo kotwol, yo osi konsane di yon ka nef korona hod sot afri. Ministè de sante ka kontine pou ekwaje tout moun pou swiv tout protokol ek toujou lave la men ek sa avon ek glo, sevi mas asofi jay, pou kove nè, bouch, ek le zot, chen sis pye distans, ek toujou san eta ek. Ek se kosa nou atwa bout nouvel la, mwen ka remesyo otan pou ka gade, ek mwen ka bwa yon invitasyon, pou jene pi mwen akor si die konseve la vi, nan gaye pwese to alot nouvel. Ka kwe yon la pwese, mwen ka fye pwese to jene el. Mesi apel primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norvell.